This video in our series of technical analysis for beginners is about going further with trends and using parallel channels. So we're gonna talk just a little bit more about using trend lines, how we can draw multiple trend lines on a chart. And we're also going to explore what's going on when a new trend forms. And then we're gonna show you how to use parallel channels to try and identify where support and resistance might be in a trend. Hello, I'm Peter Martin with Trading212. And we add tutorials about trading financial markets to YouTube on a regular basis. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's the easiest way to know when we've added new content. Well, last time we talked about trends and trend lines. So let's just very quickly recap a little bit about trend lines. So we said last time for drawing trend lines that for a downtrend, we would be looking to the peaks in the price as our guide. So the peaks might be here for using this as a sample illustration. And then we would draw a straight line through those peaks to draw our downtrend line. And then for an uptrend, we'd be looking to troughs in the price and using that as our guide. And then we would just try and draw a straight line through that for our trend line for the uptrend. Now, a single trend line can help you understand what's going on with the current trend, but there's no reason you can't draw multiple trend lines on a chart to try and help you decide what's been going on in the past. So let's look at an example of this. Here is a daily candlestick chart of silver. You can see on this that I've drawn three different trend lines to represent three different changes in the trend. So we've got an uptrend, downtrend, and then another uptrend. And we can see the uptrend here joining the troughs of that price movement. And then that tr little trend comes to an end when the price breaks below it. And then we move into this downtrend and the trend line joins the peaks in the price. And then once again, the price switches, breaks above that trend line, the trend comes to an end. And then this trend line that I've drawn on the right here, we can see how that joins the troughs in the price. Now we've been talking quite a bit about trends and about trend lines, but let's now discuss some of the causes behind a trend. What's actually going on when we get a price breakout and a new trend starts to form? Here is a daily candlestick chart of gold. And on the left of the chart, we can see how the market met resistance several times in succession in early 2018. And that's a pretty big level over a period of months. The market repeatedly tested that level and failed to move above it. And we can see here over in late 2018, how the market again starts to build in strength. And when it gets close to that previous big level, People start to sell, the market pulls back. But a few months later, the market finally breaks above that resistance decisively and we get a new trend forming. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on after the market breaks above. So here is that same chart and here is the resistance where the market rebounded on a number of occasions. Then we had this pullback here quite close to that resistance level and then the decisive break above. Now at this point, market participants are forced to reappraise the situation. They've been using what happened in the past, sort of, sort of gauge where they think things are cheap and expensive, but now they're forced to, as I say, reappraise the situation. And this actually gives you a number of potential buyers. First of all, there's people who want to be long the market, but failed to get on board in time before it pushed higher here. And so they're just looking for a pullback. And then also you might have people who took short positions thinking that the market would rebound from the resistance and now find themselves uh, pretty upset. They're on the wrong side of the market moving against them. And they're looking to try and minimize their losses. So if the market comes back somewhere close to this level, then they would be buyers as well. But the people who did get on board the market and are long are also going to set themselves target prices. So. This might be where they've set their target is where we get some small resistance, the market pulls back, and then those potential buyers buy in and fuel the move higher. You get the short people buying to get out of their positions and you get the ones who wanted to be long, seeing that this is now more favorable and jumping in. And that causes the trend to sustain itself and push even higher. And then when they set target prices, the people who are long, you get this other bit of resistance there and so on. Now, as well as drawing trend lines on a chart, we can also try and identify channels of price movement 
by adding a pair of parallel lines, one above and one below where the price is oscillating. So channels, also known as parallel channels, it's just a way of trying to identify once again where support and resistance may lie. Now we said with trends that there are three types of trend and similarly there are three types of channels. So the first one here is a descending channel. We've got the market price here oscillating between troughs and peaks. And just as with a trend line, we've drawn a straight line joining those peaks. And then we have a parallel line below that we've tried to position to draw through the troughs. And thirdly and finally, we have a sideways channel, which is a ranging market. The peaks of the market are all at the same level and the troughs of the market are at the same level and our parallel lines are horizontal. Now, trading 212s web app offers you a dedicated parallel channel tool just for this purpose. So let's take a look at how to use this. Here we are in trading 212s web app and we're looking at a daily line chart of gold. And I'm going to try and put some parallel channels on this part of the trend that's on the right hand side of the screen. So first of all, if we go up to the toolbar at the top here where and I'm hovering where it says horizontal line and then I'm going to click on the arrow and select parallel channel. And now if we click and drag our parallel lines appear, the way this works is that we have these um, circles that we can drag around on the top line to change the angle of our line as we want. And then this circle here allows me to change the distance between the two parallel lines. So let's just try and quickly arrange this as best we can to try and match what's going on with the market. So just want to uh, fit it as closely as we can and see if we can describe the uh, channel. So that's very roughly, I put on uh, an ascending channel there. If we click on Chart Explorer here, I can actually get rid of the one I've just done and turn on one that I did earlier to try and describe that ascending channel. So that does do a fairly decent job of describing where we're seeing resistance at the upper end of the ascending channel and support at the lower end of the channel with those troughs. And so you could use that to extrapolate forward and use it as some kind of guide to inform your trading decisions about where you might expect to see resistance or possibly to see support going forward. So with parallel channels, just some conventional wisdom, then the top of the channel is considered to be a guide to possible resistance. And then the bottom of the channel is a guide to possible support. Of course, this is only valid if it actually fits what the market is doing. So the market is your guide. If your parallel channel doesn't fit, you've got things breaking above and below, then your lines are probably not going to be valid. I hope you enjoyed this look at using parallel channels. If you did, please take a moment just to hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Or if you've got any thoughts on using parallel channels, we'd love to hear from you. Why not send us a message in the comment section? We do read each one. But that's all for now for me, Peter Martin and Trading212. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.